understands 3, 10 through 12, that no one is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks God. All have turned aside together. They have become worthless. Who is he talking to? No one. Nobody. Nobody is righteous, bro. So None of us are righteous enough to make telling you that in order to be righteous, you got to keep these commandments. You got to understand, brother, you got to really keep these commandments on lock, even if you want to make it to heaven. If you go and count yourself out, you might as well just keep doing what you're doing, brother. So, so, you, guys, so, you, guys, so you guys is keeping every commandment to make it to heaven. Well, well read, read back because that's, that's not the question. What's that's not the question. The question is, is, are you guys keeping every commandment to make it to heaven? Yes or no? Connor, you see us out here trying to help our brothers. Out, we're trying to question, raise up a nation. Though. The question is, are you keeping every hold commandment on, on, to make it to heaven? Romans chapter 3, verse 10, as it is written, is none righteous, no, not one. I want to give all the praises and honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Rechaha Kwadash. And double honors to the elder apostles and elder bishops as well of Great Millstone. Honors uh, in reference to you other elders and brothers, brethren scattered abroad. You elect Shalom, okay, even you few sisters that may follow and support this truth, you know, peace to you as well. Shalom. So anyway. Uh, there's a bunch of little clips like this uh, I see floating around on social media, which I don't get in social media pretty much, but it was on like Google, and it was called the Hebrew Israelite Fail. And I believe I did either this video or video similar to this some years back. I'm not sure. But I want to touch on that. You know, if you are going to be um, an Israelite and you're going to throw, you're going to put on your garments, you know, represent you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, you're going to represent the truth, let me say that, then I think you have to know, or you should know, how to answer and deal with questions. And it, in this situation, they were trying to throw it back. They could have kind of got around it a little bit, and they should have just went straight for the dagger at that point. I think at that time, the guy kind of, you know, tried to put him in a compromising position, and they should have just came straight forth with the dagger. They could have just pulled Romans 9 if they wanted. There's several ways to deal with these Christians. We deal with them on and off. And when you get experience at it, it gets pretty easy. 1 Peter 3.15 says, Be always ready to answer a man that has a reason of hope. Now, these Christians don't have a reason of hope. So you really don't have to answer them because they're not out to try to be to, to seek the truth and see wait are the are these guys telling are these Hebrews telling the truth or is it false? They're only there for their narrative to push that they're Christians and the Hebrew Israelite doctrine is wrong. Uh, now we had some of them come up with cameras and things like that, and I told them just keep the cameras rolling. But you know, obviously they cut the cameras and ran on down the street. But anyway, you know we don't boast and brag about this but we have the truth and we say the 100 percent truth of the doctrine second timothy 2 15 study to shew thy, thyself approved unto yahweh unto god it says here a workman that uh, that needeth not to be ashamed rightly divided in word and truth word of truth this is why it's important to do videos you know and even off of these guys these brothers videos whoever they are you know, we go, you know, it, it even through them, it helps sharpen us up further on certain topics that we already know pretty much. When we say sharpen up, we pretty much already know. But sometimes you'll hear a Christian come back with something that's old or they've been saying for years ago and like John 3, 16, and you got to go back. But anyway, I want to go into this Romans 3. And all the brothers really had to do was go into Romans 3 and go up a little bit and read down a little bit, right? Uh, let's go to Romans 3 and 9. What then? Are we better than they? No, and no why. So you have to know the history on the Jews and Gentiles, the Jews and Greeks. Gentile wasn't even re uh, original word. Some cases it'll say Greek. These are all, these are all universal universalism, universal words that was put in place for the meaning of both 
meaning it could be a non, a Gentile could be a non uh, Israelite and a Gentile can be an Israelite, right? You can see this in, um, I believe, 1 Corinthians 12, when it said, we, you were once Gentiles carried away into the dumb idols. I believe that's the, the scripture. So when you see the word Greek, it also means heathen man. Now, when you look in the blue, and when you look in the blue letter, and you look at the word Grecian, which I've always went into this, you know, the word Grecian simply means um, Hellenistic, Hellenistic, a uh, Hellenistic Jew, a Greek-speaking Jew. So this is what is being said, because you got to go into the, the timeline. Like if the apostles had just woke up to the truth, and they saw us walking up and down the street. And they were just teaching the truth amongst themselves. The whole point was to extend the mercy to the other Jews or other Israelites who didn't believe they were Jews. There were even Israelites, when you go into the history, that would not accept being an Israelite and wouldn't even mark themselves as an Israelite. They would say they was a Grecian. That's why Paul had to say, uh, let them be ignorant. If the man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Right, so you had different kinds of Israelites. Some you got Jake today. You'll go to and say, "Yeah, you a Jew? You know you're an Israelite." They'll go fill out an application and say, "No, I'm Black African American. I'm Native Indian, or I'm even white." Even though they might their lineage go back to being Israelites. So you get the point. It, it goes on to say, "As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one." So they read this to these brothers. And them, their, their eyes froze like a deer in the headlights. We know what they was getting at. Um, again, you got to go back to the time. Right? To know that Apostle Tahar, before he came into the truth, he was sinning. Right? All of us were. So even when I go to wake somebody up, and I'm trying to wake them up, I know I'm not free of sin. My job is to try to wake them up, though, and see the light and pass them on to the mercies. But does that mean you do away with the law and the commandments? Let's see this. Let's see here. Let's go to Mark, one of my favorite scriptures. I can almost quote this. Um, Mark 12 and 29. It says, and Yahweh shall answer him, the first of all commandments is heal Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy mind, the Lord thy God, with all thy heart, all thy and all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Right? So there's definitely acceptance in trying to keep the first commandment. Right? So this is the main goal. The main goal. If you keep the first commandment, and you love the Lord with all your heart, might, and strength, and soul, you will try to the best of your abilities to do the other commandments, right? That you can. Does that mean you do away with the law and the commandments? All he had to do was keep reading down, right? On Romans, let's go back to Romans 3. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after the Most High, after God. Who is he talking to? They are all gone out of the way. They are together, become unprofitable. There is none that, that doeth good. No, not one. Who is it? What, what was going in? What was going on here? You mean to tell me we're not doing good now? To the best of our ability? There's a precept that goes with this, right? You got to go to the precept and then we'll get to the point. Let's go to, I believe, Psalms. It's even Psalms 14 and 1 and Psalms 53 and 1. It says, To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. This is what we just saw here in Romans. Right? We just saw this here in Romans. There is none that doeth good. Well, let's go to Matthew. But first, I want to go to um, this commentary. It gives exposition of the entire Bible. 
It says, as it, is as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. The several passages cited here and some following verses are taken out of the Psalms and Isaiah, which I believe I just read. Psalms 53, Psalms 14 and 1. The fool have said in his heart, there is no God. You know, this is dealing with our people going off. And then even our people who was about the law was going off. Right? A lot of them didn't believe in uh, the Messiah. You know? And are, are brought to prove not only that the Jews are no better than the Gentiles. And that's what he's saying. Basically, the things you're doing, you're pretty much not, you, you know, how are you going to call them righteous? How are you going to call yourself right, uh, uh, them unrighteous when you're unrighteous? That's why Yahweh had to say that he who have not sinned, cast the first stone. So let's go to Matthew 23. I'm going to just get to the point. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. You can read the whole uh, this 23 chapter, and Yahweh is getting on the scribes and the Pharisees. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You know about the parable of the miner, the penny. The, uh, they all came in and threw down money, and a woman came with the penny because that's all she had. It was about uh, quality before quantity. And you get guys like that now, and the truth, they want these big super camps with uh with so called quality, I mean quantity, but they're not at the quality. They're not calling on the name of the Lord. Right? You got a guy to call him himself the uh the comforter who the Lord took, you know? That would be the example. Yahweh would have went in there and cursed them out. It says, Well to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto white sepulchres, right? which indeed appear beautiful outward, like what you see in the, the cemeteries, the, the outward ones, and they look all beautiful, right? But are within full of dead men's bones, right? So he's comparing them, their synagogues and what they're doing, like the synagogue of Satan, what they're doing is they're monopolizing or capitalizing off of the law and not teaching faith. Which the mystery, they're not even teaching the mystery, which the mystery goes back to Yahawashah. You'll see, I believe in Galatians, when it talks about this is the mystery that, that Paul was speaking about, which was, which was since the world, all things were created by Yahawashah, right? So when we go back here, uh, let me go back to Romans, the third chapter, and let me try to... Um, touch on that a little bit further just to get to the point so what these Christians are trying to say is that we all sin which that's where mercy comes Romans 6 chapter um, well let me get that real quick because then it just jumps to other things let me go to Romans 6 I believe is the 14th chapter we go over this over and over with these Christians it says Romans 6 and 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. And the Christians will jump and say amen to that. You know why they say that? Because they want to sin. This is Jeremiah 4 and 22 to them. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. We're in a, 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 a situation where we can't keep the laws because we're under captivity. The Lord, the, the law was given to us, but the ceremonies... And the things that, the other things we do, the altars is just to show the Lord, you know, our love and appreciation. But the Lord ain't had to have us do the sacrifices and things like that. He sent his son for that. It says, anyway, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? This is why you'll see in the shambles when um, um, they was making sacrifices and um, telling people to eat. You know, it's sacrificed food. And some will say, I'm not eating it because it's sacrificed food. And Paul would say, go ahead and eat it, man. You know why? Because it's all of the Lord's anyway. Pray over your food and eat it. Right? It also says, what then shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? Yahweh forbid. Right? So God forbid. That don't mean you're supposed to sin. 
sin is the transgression of the laws, First John. Okay? So you're not supposed to just willfully go out and sin. What's happening is you have the men that set up about the law and they're, they're using the law as a, a form of captivity on men. Remember, Paul had to use guile because you had the Grecians who were Greek-speaking Jews and they had beefs going on, right? So it was a lot going on and Paul had to use guile and they wanted to kill him behind telling certain men that ain't all, it ain't all about the law. But let's see what it says. We know the law is not going to save you. It never was going to save you, you know? Uh, Yahawasha, you know, is going to, Yahweh and Yahawasha, which is the word of the Most High, is going to save you, which ultimately all comes under that. Uh, let's go down to verse 9. What then? Um, are we better than they? No, let's go down to, I'm going to go to the last one. Where is the boasting then? This is Romans 3 27. Is it excluded by the law? Of works, nay, but by the law of faith. And the Christians will say, Amen. Right, the law of faith, because you can't keep the law, but that doesn't mean do away with the law. You have to have faith in dealing with the law. That's why I saw the law of faith. You have to have faith in dealing with the law, knowing that there's certain things you can't do, like even on the Passover. Okay? Therefore, we conclude that a man is. Uh, is justified by faith without the deeds of the law right which is true because there's some things in the law that you can't do is he uh, the God of the Jews only is he not also of the Gentiles yes the Gentiles also seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith uncircumcision through faith so what we see here um uh, it says, therefore, we conclude that man is not justified by faith, that, that man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So this is why we, we still do the Passover, right? Because there's certain things in the law of the Passover that we can't even do. There's certain materials that we can't even wear that we should, we supposed to be wearing. There's a whole lot of things that we can't do. This is why it's about the faith. And he'll go on and say, let's go to the point. Do we then, it says, do we then make void the law through faith? With a question mark. God forbid, yea, we establish the law. And that's all they had to read. Matthew 5 and 48 says, be ye perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. This is going into the faith, the law of faith. We know that we can't be perfect in this world. But what is perfect? When you look up that word perfect, it means of a completion. How do you complete? When Paul said it, Paul would have been perfect. You had a lot of Israelites and different groups say Paul wasn't perfect. Yes, he was. He was perfect in his generation. Or let me say he was perfect because he finished his course. That word perfect just simply means completion. In fact, well, let me get that just to prove that. We, we can go here to G... 5046. See what it says. Strong's G 5046. Teleos. It means to be brought to its end to finish. Wanting nothing necessary necessary to be completeness perfect. Which we know Yahweh, Yahweh Shah is already perfect. But Yahweh Shah hasn't finished. He's finished that part of what he needed to do. But there's more completion that Yahweh has to go. And that's when he comes to take down his place. You know? When he comes to take down this man. Now we know Yahweh is perfect. But my whole point is that Yahweh is coming to complete. So he's coming to finish what he's he set out to do. And that's to uh subdue his enemies and um you know subdue the nations with as the scriptures say with many crowns 
right? He's going to bring all the nations, you know, these other nations down and recompense. Revelation 1 and 7. When he shall come, um, all eyes shall see him. Anyway, I just looked at this and I was like, oh, man, you know. Uh, I think they, them guys, uh, you know, when these clips come out, they never play the whole clip. You know, I don't know what the brothers did. They may even went into that. I don't know. But that's, you know, it's being circumspect when these Christians come up and they're recording. And not that we need some social media acceptance, you know. But the first, there's, when things like that happen, you know, scriptures like that, things that come to the mind, especially when it comes to scriptures like that, have them go above and read on down until you get your information that you, you know, you need to get. Anyway, that's all I have on that. Shalom.